How to use macros and libraries in Affinity Photo. Macros can save a whole range of different steps, such as filters, transforms, and much, much more. To keep the macro permanently, you have to store it in a library. The key panels can be found via the View menu, Studio, and Macro and Library. I'm going to use a gradient. I could be using an image, text, etc. Go to the Macro panel. Click the red record button at the top of the panel. Go to the filters menu, distort and equations. Go to the Y field, set Y to H minus Y. Click apply. That flips the image vertically. You will now see one entry in the macro panel. Go to the layer menu and fade equations. Set the fade to 0%. That brings in the entire effect. Set the blending mode to lighten, darken, difference, etc. In this case, I'm using difference. Click apply. Go to the macro panel. You will now see two entries. Click the white square beside the record button to stop the recording. Go to the right side of the panel and there's some additional buttons. Click the second entry. That's add to library. A dialog will appear. Give it a category and also give it a name. Click OK and it's been saved to the library. Now you can use it in future projects. Go to the library panel and you can see your macro has been saved to the category. If you want to create a new category, you can always go to the right side menu and click create new category. I'm going to create a new gradient and I'm going to use that macro. To run it, just click the macro in the library panel. There are two fade macros, one I created earlier. One is for lightened blending mode and one is for difference blending mode. The macro has been run. You've now created a colourful gradient. You can remove the steps from the macro panel via the reset button. You can see some other options at the bottom of the library panel. I'll discuss those in another video. You can right click the macro in the library panel. You can rename, you can delete and you can edit. You will see the steps reappear in the macro panel. You can then change some of the settings, though sadly not the fade or the blending mode of the fade command. You can also use the fade macro with other elements such as a circle or any other shape. I've got the shape filled with a gradient. With the shape selected, go to the library panel and click the fade macro. And depending on the shape and the fill, it will create an interesting design. You can also apply this to images, but you can also use text. Quickly create some text with the text tool. With the text layer selected, go over to the library panel and again click the fade macro. The macro feature is a very useful feature of Affinity Photo, so you can use it to create all kinds of steps, save them and reuse them again and again and again. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. I'm always adding new tutorials about Affinity Photo as well as other applications. Please add a comment or two. Also a dislike or like. Thank you much.